Hello and welcome to Automatic Public Holidays. My name is Jeff, I'm glad you're here. Let's just jump right in. By the end of this video, you'll be able to enter a year into a cell and Excel will automatically update your public holidays table. And anything that references that table is also automatically updated. It's pretty cool. Let's head to our first exercise, exercise one. Did you know there's this free API that returns public holidays? You can specify the year and country code and it returns the public holidays. We can open this in any browser and we can also bring it right into Excel. Let me show you what it looks like in the browser. Let me just click the link. Okay, here's what it returns in my browser. This formatting is called JSON, so we can kind of read it, but there's also a lot of extra characters and stuff. And I'll show you how we can clean this up in Excel. So let's go back to Excel. One way to return this URL directly into the grid is by using the web service function. It looks like this, equals web service. And then we provide it the URL. Since the URL is already here in C5, we'll just pass it C5. Close function and enter. And as you can see, now we have that JSON string right here in the grid. So we could use some clever text functions to pull out the dates that we want. For example, we could look at functions like mid, find, search, text before. We could even use text split. For example, text split, the text is here in C6. I want a new column at every what, well, we'll say every colon. And what's the row delimiter? We'll use the open curly brace close function and enter. And so it kind of gives it to us in a little bit more usable format, but this is much easier with Power Query. So let's go to the next exercise, exercise two. We'll take two passes with Power Query. First, we'll just hard code the year, and second, we'll come back and we'll let the user type the year into the cell. So let's start with the first pass. We go to data and under get and transform data, we click from web. In the resulting from web dialog, we just paste in the URL. And again, for this first pass, we're gonna leave this year hard coded and then we'll click OK. In the resulting dialog, we click Connect. Okay, this opens the Power Query Editor. So what we see is the JSON file contained a list with a bunch of records. So we're gonna apply a couple of transformations to get this to look like a table like we want. First, we're gonna click Convert to Table. In the resulting two table dialog, we're just gonna click OK. Now we're gonna click Expand, and we're gonna uncheck Use Original Column, and then I'm gonna uncheck Select All Columns so I can pick and choose. Date, Name, and Types and I'm gonna click OK. Okay, now we have the date, name, and types. So what's this types? Well, if we click over here, we can see that it is a public, public, observance, public, and so on. So this is the type of holiday, basically. So we'll click expand, and we'll say expand to new rows. And now we can see these. And in some cases, holidays are showing up twice because they have two different types. So you can apply a filter on this if you'd like. I'm gonna go ahead and filter this to only show public holidays. And I'm gonna click OK. We don't need this column anymore, so I'll just delete it. Currently, this date column would be returned as a text value, but I wanna be able to use it in lookups and in other places within Excel. So I'm gonna convert this to a date. So I'm gonna click data type and I'm gonna change it to a date. Okay, perfect. Then I'm gonna close and load two and I'm gonna save it to a table in an existing worksheet right here and click OK. And now we've got it. And what's really cool is we can do lookups on these dates. And that means we can use these anywhere in the workbook that we want. And we'll do that in the next exercise, but before we do, let's figure out how to allow the user to type in any year and have this table update accordingly. So the first thing we'll do is we'll select the year cell and then we need to give it a name. There's many ways to do this. For now, I'm gonna head over to the name box and I'm gonna type in my name. I'll just keep it simple and I'll type year and I need to be sure to hit enter. Now I can refer to this cell by using the name year. And that means if we insert some new rows above or to the left and the position of that changes, we'll be able to track it by using the name year. Now let's get this named cell into Power Query. I'm gonna select this cell and I'm gonna click this from table range command. And it pulls in the cell value, perfect. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click that cell value and I'm gonna select drill down. And that converts it to this number that we can use in other queries. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to home, close and load two, and I'm gonna select only create connection. And I'll click okay. And that just makes that value available in Power Query. Now let's go edit our initial query. To do that, we're just gonna double click US. Now we just click the source step. And now we're gonna look at the formula bar. And by the way, if your Power Query is not displaying the formula bar, it's easy to add. Just go to view and tick the formula bar checkbox. Okay, and basically what we wanna do is we wanna replace this 2026 with the year name. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna delete that. We're gonna close that first text segment. Then we're gonna use the concatenation operator to join it to our value year. 
And then we're going to use the concatenation operator, the ampersand, to join that with US. So here we have three text segments. We have the base URL, we have our year variable, and then we have US. And then we hit enter. And now we get an error. And no worries, this is just saying that this is coming through as a number and it's expecting a text. So what we can do is we can just use the text.from function and put the year argument in between parens and enter. All right, and now we have this formula firewall error. No worries there. A couple of different ways to handle this. What we're gonna do is we're gonna click File, Options and Settings, Query Options. Okay, now we're not gonna change these global settings. We're gonna go down to the current workbook only so that this update only impacts the current workbook. And we're gonna click Privacy. And then we're just gonna say, ignore the privacy levels. After all, all we're sending is a year that we type into a cell and we're getting public API data. No worries. Then we click OK. Now, with that change made, we just click Refresh Preview. OK, that looks much better. Now, these same applied steps will come next. So what we can do is click Home, Close and Load. OK, let's test it out. Let's enter 2025. And now to refresh the table, a couple ways to do it. We're just going to use Data Refresh All. Boom. <laughs> it's done. And what about 2027? Refresh All. Done. That's fast. That's awesome. And let's go back to 2026 and refresh all and got it. And now let's see one example of how we can use this holidays table in our workbook. Let's go to the next exercise, exercise three. Let's say we wanted to calculate the network days per month. So to start, we'll use the date function to go grab the year that the user typed in and start at January 1st. Close function and enter. Now to get the last day in the month, we're going to use the EO month function. The start date is the value in the cell to the left, and the number of months is zero. Close function and enter. Now that formatting looks wonky, so let's just grab a date format we like, go to home, use the format painter, and apply it to this one. Perfect. Now the next row is gonna be equal to the last day of the prior month plus one day. And then we can just fill this one down. Now let's fill this down all the way through December. And let's widen these columns a bit. Perfect. Now, let's calculate the net number of workdays. So what we can do is we can use the net workdays function, and we pass it the start date, comma, and end date. And if we just pass these two values, it's gonna remove weekends. So we can close function and enter, and let's fill this down. So this is the number of net workdays minus weekends. So it's basically Monday to Friday. By the way, if you have different weekends, you can check out the net workdays international version, which allows you to be more specific about how weekends are treated. In any event, we can also factor in holidays. So equals network days, start, end, comma, and for holidays, we're just gonna give it this list. Close function and enter. And now let's fill this version down. So this version is network days for the weekends, and this one is network days including these holidays. So now we've got this list for 2026. What happens when we go to 2027? Is there a bunch of manual work to update this? No. Here's what that looks like. 2027, data, refresh all. And it's done. <laughs> Sorry, I just love this kind of stuff. So that's how we can enter a year into a cell and have Excel automatically populate the holidays. And then we can use those holidays anywhere else within the workbook that we need them. Hopefully this has been helpful. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day. Hey, Excel user, if you ever need to create summary reports, check out my pivot table for beginners video. It starts at the beginning and shows how to store the data transactions in a table and then how to summarize those transactions with a pivot table report. I hope it helps unlock the incredible power of pivot tables. This video is a production of Excel University.